Welcome crypto friends. Well, what a week it's been in crypto land. Well, <laughs> well we were talking last week. Uh, now, let's have a look where we were last week. We were looking around about here in terms of Saturday, Sunday, where essentially this support level here had been breached to the downside, considering that that was the move the week beforehand. And that support level in terms of Bitcoin, 61,181 level had been breached and we were basically just going sideways at that point in time and the breach level that happened at that point in time. And that was where we were talking about potential um, for a slight bounce, which had occurred up to the 63,500 level in terms of a slight bounce with some protection at that point in time. So we're looking in terms of a small bounce, keep your puts on if you were looking in terms of, say, uh, investing in Beto or anything on those lines there or in terms of any uh, crypto ETFs or anything on those lines, keeping any puts in, in terms of anything in terms of a swing downwards. And sure enough, in came the swing downwards in terms of the Tuesday, Wednesday, and sure enough, that support level crumbled to bits. And boy, oh boy, did it crumble to bits. We took out um, took out the 60,000 level, took out the 57,500 level, and came back very, very quickly in terms of testing the 53,800 level for Bitcoin. Wow. But look at what's happened here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring this up a little here so we can get rid of this volume because the volume just really came in as well. And I'm going to expand that. So you can really see exactly what's happened here. And this is what's happened on all of the charts that we actually review. Um, so this is actually going to dispel anyone's thoughts that technical analysis does not work in relation to coins. Um, so no, it does. And it can work to the penny in terms of some of these things here. Um, so essentially what's basically happened is it's come down, tested a support level, and wow, so we got a support level here for Bitcoin at 53,805.46. What was the low? 53,499. Well, really? Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, looking pretty good, wasn't it? So came down, tested that there. Okay, well, okay, maybe not to the penny in relation to this one here, but it's a pretty good guide rail. So when you've got a when you have a coin that's come down from where we were talking about, okay, uh, we were talking about at a level here when we were in the, just above 60,000 and you've come down to 53,800. So you've lost 7,000 and you've got a guide rail there that's basically saying here it can and it bounces right back up with, from that point overall yesterday. That's pretty nice to be able to actually deal with that overall so there you go it can really give you some good guidance as to what's actually happening from there and if you're actually looking at smaller time frames in that point in time there to be able to actually work about where you can actually look in terms of where you, where you might be able to actually uh, if you've got put put options or whatever on an etf or whatever the case is and then you can actually manipulate an actual coin purchase to neutralize that in terms of knowing where to actually work with there, then bang, you've got an actual trade and you can actually work with it there. When you know the bounce is actually coming in, then you can actually work with it. And there you go. That's how you can actually work with it to, to um, be able to actually deal with the situation. Nice. So congratulations for anyone who's been able to pick up on that there and you can actually work in the circumstance there and be able to actually deal with anything along those lines. And especially if it actually comes back up here, test the base of that level there, test the support area there, and then you can actually adjust the position again in accordance with that circumstance as well too. So that's Bitcoin. And all of the other coins have done exactly the same thing and are following in sympathy. So we've got Ethereum doing the same thing here as well currently testing that support level here 
at around about the 3,000 level. So 2,977.72 to be exact. It's actually testing that right now, just slightly above that, just underneath 3,000 right now in terms of Ethereum. The current time right now is just after 7 p.m. on Saturday night down here in Australia. Uh, so that's what we're that's what we're looking at right now in relation to timing. After having been at these levels up here last week in terms of Sunday and uh, the, the actual um, levels around about that time were around about 3,350, 3,370 uh, at that area there. So quite a substantial decline ever since those times there. So it's Ethereum as well. So everything going in sympathy. Uh, the previous top of the green zone area at the end of last week in terms of Ethereum, uh, we were looking at 3,500 where it needed to actually get past and also in terms of the prior resistance area, 3,588. Couldn't get past those areas and we have declining 10 and 30-day moving averages as well. So a lot of work for it to actually recover with there. Current level of interest for Ethereum, 3,261 in order to get past in terms of actually maintaining some form of bullishness um, and also to try and get back into no man's land territory. Going back to Bitcoin, it would need to get past the 10-day moving average, uh, which is currently six, just above 60,000 at this point in time, and also getting above the level of interest in terms of buyers and sellers, uh, around about 61,840. So a lot of work to do in order to get itself back up above that uh, and also needs to get past 57,500 resistance area as well um, in order to get back even towards no man's land territory. Let's take a look at the altcoins. What's the story there? Well, pretty much a similar kind of picture. Um, so this is actually just getting back into the green zone area uh, in terms of Litecoin, but all the chart patterns are pretty much exactly the same. But uh, Litecoin, well, interestingly enough, with the ADX, if we take a look down below at that indicator, uh, I'll just move the cursor up a little so you can actually see the ADX itself. Uh, but that's actually sh tending to show that there may be some more bullishness in Litecoin overall with the ADX crossing over the negative DMI um, being the red line. Uh, but essentially, in terms of Litecoin, we're back in the green zone area. You can see a bit of bullishness there in today's chart uh, and getting back into that green zone area. Uh, but it would then need to actually get past the 65.52 resistance in order to actually uh, show more bullishness overall and then get back past the 69.73 resistance to even even nudge the declining 10-day moving average of $70.79 to get back into no man's land territory. Moving across to Dogecoin, uh, Dogecoin uh, still fairly negative overall, uh, but when we're really looking at things, uh, we're actually now tackling this, which is now a support area, considering it's above that area there so that support zone is 0 0.10672 it's currently trading at 0 0.10775 so you've got some form of support going on overall there but just just basically just getting itself back into a, a new green zone area um but do remember that the former level of interest is up here at 0 0.14226 well above the current level of interest of 0 0.13949, just the top of the green zone area here, which would then place it back into no man's land territory between 10 and 30 day moving averages. So a lot of work for that to do in terms of getting back into consolidation area really more than anything else as well. Um, so quite a lot of work for Dogecoin as well. Bitcoin Cash, very similar situation, except it's got a heck of a lot of resistance areas here to actually overcome as well before we can even get back into the consolidation area. Um, slightly to the base of the green zone area at this point in time, uh, but not looking too bad either, I suppose, considering that the, if you take a look at the ADX indicator down below, uh, the ADX is above the minus DMI there as well. So looking like it could be trying to get some momentum. RSI is not looking all that great though, admittedly, uh, but uh, yeah, it's still, yeah, got a lot of work to do, uh, admittedly. Um, we have the uh, level of interest uh, being uh, very, very far away into the $381.42. Last week's 
um, level of interest, 432.28. So massive declines, as you can see there as well. A lot of work to get back to consolidation there as well for Bitcoin Cash. Polkadot, a very narrow green zone, interestingly enough. And it's actually moved quite a bit even into today's trade. So a reasonable amount of bullishness going on here. Uh, but at the same time, a lot to overcome here as well in terms of the level of interests. So level of interest at the present time in terms of buyers and sellers where it would really start kicking in is $5.92.1. Last week's $6.37.5. Um, now, it would still need a lot of work in order to get back to the 10 and the 30 day moving averages. Uh, it's pretty much been decimated as you can see here and it really struggled with this particular resistance area here at $6.56.6. .6. Uh, so a lot of work to do there uh, as well in terms of polka dot. Solana stuck right in the middle of the green zone area, but it has actually just traded above uh, this particular resistance area here at $136.93, currently trading at $137.48, um, just ticking there. And uh, quite a bit of work overall, like you can see. Interestingly, in the RSI, it's actually trading reasonably well, but very, very much a flat line in relation to um, momentum at this stage. Level of interest where it would really start inspiring something is currently about $142.95. And last but not least, we're looking at Cardano, trading at the base of the green zone area at this point in time. Looks like the negative momentum is starting to pick up a little bit, as you can see from the ADX down below. Um, so it could be on its way back to test the support level more than anything else at uh, about 34 cents at this point in time currently trading at 34 just on just on 35 cents smack bang right now which is right on the base of the of the green zone area right now uh, looks as though the high of today's trade is pretty much the resistance area of 35.87 cents so a lot of work for the cryptos to do in order to make sure that they can actually try and recover from all of this damage, out of all honesty. But really, the big mainstay, keep an eye on Bitcoin and Ethereum, really, at this point. And you can, as you can see there with Bitcoin, it is right beneath the green zone area at this point in time, with momentum rising to the bearishness side at this point as it tries to really struggle to get back into the green zone area and overcome that resistance there at 57 and a half thousand and um yeah things are not looking all that great right now even though we've got a lot of tails at this point in time which are, are tackling support so a little bit there at this point in time to really have um have the bulls feeling a little bit more relaxed at this point in time but will the support actually keep it going at this point in time to actually hold things up and um, will it be able to actually overcome any of these resistances that are there at this point so a lot to, a lot to look forward to for the cryptos to be able to actually see what does happen here for the future I'll leave it there for now. Uh, keep an eye out also for the long-term moving averages analysis, which I'll be looking forward to releasing hopefully sometime this week and working on that as we speak. And also keep an eye on the uh, overall stock market. But it does look as though at this point in time, the overall stock market performance, especially in terms of NASDAQ and S&P, is now decoupling from cryptos at this point in time. We were previously seeing NASDAQ fairly highly correlated with cryptos not appearing to be the case anymore we really are seeing cryptos in their own element at this point and really has been especially over this past week uh, so yeah have a look at the long-term moving averages be really really interesting to see how that's looking and how that compares especially to um, the overall stock market as well and also how it also compares to things like the bonds as well, because that's really coming into play, especially when it comes to things like the interest rate discussions that are going on at this moment as well too. So all the best for your trading for the week. Keep an eye on all of those uh, videos like I'm, like I'm mentioning. They'll be released very, very soon. Have a fantastic week. Catch up with you soon. Bye for now.